face him, you risk losing your army here. And if we capture him, we gain an empire. He is one of history's most influential rulers and conquered Asia before his 30th birthday. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 fascinating facts about Alexander the Great. For this list, we're looking at the most interesting tidbits regarding one of the greatest military minds the world has ever seen. Number 10. He had heterochromia iridum. Alexander's appearance is best represented by statues and coins, but neither of those accurately portrays his most distinguishing feature, his different colored eyes. The condition, known as heterochromia iridum or iridus, affects approximately 6 out of 1,000 people. Alexander had complete heterochromia, where one iris is a completely different color from the other. Arian, a famous Greek historian, wrote, quote, He had one eye dark as the night, and one blue as the sky. This was echoed by British historian Peter Green, who reviewed several ancient documents and determined that one of his eyes was blue and the other was brown. Number 9. Alexander's royal steed was also noteworthy. It's Bucephalus, the magic horse of Alexander the Great. No legendary commander is complete without a noble steed upon which to ride into battle. According to Plutarch, Alexander won the horse when he was about 12 years old by making a wager with his father Philip, who agreed to purchase the animal if Alexander could tame it. The horse, called Bucephalus, was a mighty steed who possessed a mighty temper. Alexander, realizing that the horse simply feared his own shadow, lured the horse towards the sun and successfully calmed the animal. Bucephalus served Alexander in multiple battles, before eventually dying during the Battle of Hydaspes in June 326 BC. Number 8. The Conqueror Liked to Put His Name on Cities Speaking of Bucephalus, Alexander actually named a city after his horse in 326 BC on the Hydaspes, now known as the Jalum. In fact, he founded or renamed up to 70 cities during his conquest. Naturally, he named almost every single one after himself, calling them all Alexandria. The most famous Alexandria was founded at the mouth of the Nile River in 331 BC. Once the home of Cleopatra and the wondrous Great Library, it is currently the second largest city in Egypt. Number 7. He was Aristotle's student. It is. It has always been our Greek dream to go east. The east has a way of swallowing men and their dreams. Whether you study classical history or not, most people are familiar with the name Aristotle. One of history's greatest philosophers, Aristotle wrote on many subjects and is considered by some to be the first genuine scientist in history. He also spent three years tutoring Alexander. Aristotle was hired by Alexander's father, Philip, who agreed to rebuild the teacher's hometown of Stagira as payment. It's believed that Alexander developed his passion for the works of Homer while studying under Aristotle. The philosopher even gave the great conqueror an annotated copy of the Iliad, which Alexander took on his campaigns. Number 6. Roxana was pretty great too. Alexander the Great had many impressive accomplishments in his life, including the remarkable capture of Sogdian Rock in 327 BC. While surveying the captives, he noticed Roxana, also known as Roxanne, the daughter of a Bactrian nobleman. Despite opposition from his generals and friends, Alexander married Roxanne in a traditional ceremony, and she would go on to give birth to a son. Through our union, Greek and barbarian. Alexander also had other Macedonian men take Persian wives and adopted several aspects of Persian culture including their dress, thanks to Roxana's influence. And by doing that, he's sending out a huge message to the rest of the world that I have the Persian women, I am the Persian king. Number 5. He may have been involved in a plot to kill his father. <laughs> Alexander and his father had a strong relationship when he was a child, but that slowly deteriorated over time. It didn't help when Philip decided to marry Cleopatra Eurydice, putting Alexander's right to the throne in jeopardy. Mysteriously, however, Philip was assassinated at a wedding banquet in 336 BC by his own bodyguards. 
With the throne open, Alexander was proclaimed king at just 20 years old and immediately had all potential rivals removed, including his own cousin. Although there's no proof, many people believe that either Alexander and or his mother Olympias were involved in Philip's murder. This isn't how I wanted to become king. No one blames you. They blame me already behind my back. Number four, Alexander could cut to the heart of the matter. Let me explain to you the tale of the Gordian Knot. The Gordian Knot was an intricate knot used by Gordius and tied by his son Midas to keep his ox cart secured. It was better known by the famous prophecy that predicted that whoever untied the knot would become the king of Asia. Over the years, many people attempted to untie the knot, but none succeeded. However, this changed when Alexander reached the town of Gordium. Ever the problem solver, the story goes that Alexander grew frustrated with the knot and immediately pulled out his sword and sliced it in half. He would eventually fulfill the prophecy by conquering Asia as far as the Oxus and the Indus. Number 3. He brought down the Persian Empire Alexander faced Persian king Darius III in three famous battles and boldly refused truce terms in his audacious letters to Darius. The last of the three battles resulted in the fall of the Persian Empire. In the Battle of Gogamila, also known as the Battle of Arbella, the Macedonian army was outnumbered by the Persians, but they succeeded due to their phalanx formation, which they perfected under Alexander's leadership. This formation involved a tight grouping of soldiers carrying shields and spears, making it difficult to penetrate. The defeat of the Persians exposed some of Alexander's vices, including his alcoholism. A heavy drinker, he got so drunk that he burned Persepolis, one of the biggest cities of the Persian Empire, though whether it was by accident or on purpose is not known. Number 2. He Never Lost a Battle Conquer your fear! And I promise you, you will conquer death! Alexander won his first military victory at just 18 years old. And the winds just kept on coming. He took on the Persian Empire at just 22 years old and defeated them in three major battles, resulting in their destruction less than three years later. Alexander always seemed, whenever every battle that he fought, always seemed to be at the crucial point where the tactic shifted. Eventually, Alexander moved into India and defeated King Porus in an epic battle in 326 BC. He even conquered the coastal base of Tyre by building a causeway over half a mile long to access the island. Although Alexander's armies were usually outnumbered, his bold tactics, military speed, and superior leadership allowed him to defeat any enemy he faced. Number 1. Alexander's death was suitably mysterious By the time he was 32, Alexander had accomplished more than many could have in three lifetimes. Unfortunately, he suddenly died in June 323 BC. Sources differ on the cause, with some claiming that he developed a fever after a day of drinking that was so severe he was unable to speak. Others claim that he may have been poisoned, with one source even going as far as to say that Aristotle was involved. Natural causes like typhoid fever or malaria have also been suggested, but we likely will never know the real cause. Do you agree with our list? What's your favorite fact about Alexander the Great? For more great top 10s published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. Isn't it a lovely thing to live with great courage and to die leaving an everlasting fame?